<laughs> voiceover trail reviews. That is me. So I, like, smashed yeah. it. You're okay. Yeah. <laughs> if I'm going to get up at 5 a.m. on a rainy Saturday morning just to drive in the dark to a muddy trailhead, it better be for something good. I should preface this video by saying that I did not race. I've volunteered for quite a few races, and I do like the social event that each race represents, but I never sign up for these things because I think I have more fun just volunteering for the race than actually racing. I got to the trailhead Saturday morning on the first rainy day we'd had in months to find volunteers already hard at work directing parking, setting up tents, handing out race packets, and even pre-riding the course to make sure that no trees had come down in the windstorm we'd had overnight. People who make contributions, by the way, are important, and that's why I I'd like to pause here to remind you to like and subscribe as well as leave a comment at the end of this video. I, once again, I do read your comments. I love your comments. Leave a comment. Making these videos also takes a lot of effort and time. If you'd like to contribute to continuing to improve this channel and keep it going, please navigate to patreon.com slash voiceover trails and select a contribution level that feels appropriate for what you get out of this content. Races are complicated events that do not organize themselves. It requires a lot of dedicated work from both employees of the race organizer as well as an army of volunteers at each event. I arrived at 7.15 in the morning to find volunteers already hard at work running the registration station for the racers who would be arriving over the next two hours. I discovered today that while the GoPro is generally an exceptional camera for terrible conditions like we experienced on this race, microphones don't work so well when there's water in them. So to everyone I interviewed for this video, I'm sorry if you didn't make it in, it's because your audio got muffled. At 8 a.m. sharp, Trey Wilson, the one who runs Cascadia Dirt Cup, the one who'd already been in the occult burn since Thursday, setting up the course markers, started briefing the race volunteers on how to execute their roles. The biggest need for volunteers in any race is for people who run the timing stations at both the top and bottom of the race segments. If you've ever raced, that person activating your timer chip, spacing out the riders, and running the secondary timing at the bottom was a volunteer. They all showed up to stand awkwardly in the rain while Trey led them through how they'd be spending the next six hours. Here we have three very important and intrepid volunteers who were stationed at the top of Sixth Sense all day long. It helps to bring along all your friends when you're participating in an event like this. I want you to look closely at these riders. This is the cleanest and freshest they'll look all day long. And everyone was already soaked an hour before the race had even begun. Call-ups began at 8.45 in the morning as Trey gathered the racers together to go over the nuts and bolts, the instructions, the procedures racers must follow to have a successful race with a qualifying time. I tried to keep up with the first heat of riders on my way up to the top of the hill, but I quickly had to give up and let it go if I was going to have any chance of lasting for the rest of the day. I had much videoing to do today, so I needed to preserve my strength. On this rainy morning, the climbing route, which is a trail us locals to the Yackle Burn affectionately refer to as Murphy's Grade, was pretty much a river from top to bottom. Not that it's a concern, though, the trail follows an old road grade, and it's nothing but rocks six feet down. I felt bad for the racers who were signed up for Enduro Pro, as they got to climb this grade three times. The first part is easy. The second part climbs straight up the fall line, and it is so steep that a lot of people just push their bikes up the entire thing. I encountered the first mechanical of the day on my way up Murphy's. Ah, uh, dude, is this our official first mechanical? Can I have, like, bother you and ask you if you have set pliers? Letting someone borrow my pliers was the least I could do since I once again, wasn't actually racing. Today I learned that straight pole spokes can, uh, can be finicky. Good to know. I mentioned in a previous video that there's this drainage channel crossing Ross grade that's been my little pet for the last six or seven years. Well, it's still my pet. And the best time to address drainage is when it's actively raining. So since I wasn't racing, I had to stop and give this some love. If I don't, the whole trail just turns into a river. I mean, come on, we're all mountain bikers here, right? You understand, you'd, you'd do the same if it was your pet. Upper Thrillium parking lot, still raining. This is the first time I've seen Beargrass, the new trail that connects the parking lot at the top of Thrillium to the top of Larch Mountain with moisture in it. The combination of rain and bike tires is literally exactly what this trail needed to get it bedded in, and already it appeared the tread was benefiting from the attention. But Beargrass is a steep and sustained climb, and I was starting to really feel sorry for the racers as we were nearing the top of this, the first of three major climbs on this course. But everyone appeared to be in good spirits notwithstanding.
And the reward for that 2100 feet of climbing in the rain was the opportunity for each rider to wait their turn at the top of the mountain in the 45 degree rain and wind. At least it wasn't 35 degrees. This is also where we learn to really appreciate the volunteers, because while racers will be moving again soon, the volunteers running the timing system just have to stand up here and be cold. All right, here's a walk by of a bunch of the racers. Time for a little interlude. What does my local trail organization get out of this race anyway? Why, why are we, why are we doing these races? I decided to have a chat with Eric Albers, the president of the Southwest Washington chapter of Evergreen Mountain Bike Alliance, so we could discuss this. Why are we out here in the rain, in the cold? What are we doing today? Oh man, CDC came to town uh, as they have for years, and yeah, big supporters, and uh, we love having them here and pitching in and help paying for new trails and good times. With Good folk. They do a circuit throughout this Pacific Northwest, basically, right? Yeah. Well, they go into Montana a little bit now and yeah. Idaho, so. Yeah. So it's not a, it's yeah. not a little thing. Yeah. It's kind of a big deal, and um, a lot of people have asked, okay, so why you know why should we have this race on our trail system? You know, what's I mean, doesn't a lot of bike? There's a lot of bikes there. Doesn't that cause some issues? What uh, a lot of racers do, if you got a bad spot, it's because you didn't build it right in the first place, and the racers just show you where it's at. You tune it up, you fix it, and it's better the next year, and. Uh, so really it highlights uh, where you did your job well and where you didn't do it well. There's a lot to learn. A lot of places in the trail that really needed to get packed down yeah. got packed down. Yeah. It looks smooth. Yeah, the yeah, outside lines are going to be so they fast really on good. Wednesday when the sun comes back. It's totally. going to be great. And yeah. so the awesome, the other, the other awesome thing about this is that yeah. they leave a big check for the local trail organization. Um, it's like $5,000. $5,000. $5,000 goes quite a long way, as you know, in improving our trails and maintaining our trails and keeping this great. So they give back. Every trail you've ridden up here has had Evergreen crews on it that have been paid, you know, volunteer and Evergreen, and that money came and in part from CDC for sure. So they're, they're part of that structure. All right, back to the top of the hill. Man, it was cold and wet up here, but it was worth it. Also, this, this guy brought an umbrella. Some, someone I, something I thought was extremely important for me to point out that this guy had an umbrella with him. The course was wet. It was the slick and scary kind of wet. The kind of wet that slowed everyone down. No one was going to be breaking course records today. Now, I'm not going to sit here and lie to you and tell you that I'm a fast rider because I'm not. But geez, this is even slow for me. One of the things I really appreciated about not being in the race is that when I got here to the spot where the top of Sixth Sense crosses a road, I didn't have to ride this section of Sixth Sense. I saw how muddy it was, noped right out of that slime bucket, and coasted down the road to the top of Lower Cold Creek. It took us a lot longer than I'd like to admit before we all realized that none of us hanging out at the top right here at this moment were actually racing. It was just me and like five sweepers, all politely trying to stay out of racers' way before the timer asked us what the hell we were doing. Cold Creek's always a good friend, isn't it? Yeah, it was, it was wet, just like all the other trails. Let's just do a montage of muddy bikes and riders. It looked like everyone got a chance to take just a little bit of the Yakult burn home with them today. I, you look, you're one of those people that's way different without their glasses. Yeah. You do I was, voiceover trailer. How was it? I um, do. So, 
So today there were some um, unexpected surprises on Trail 6 based on what we're used to seeing. Um, there was some soft dirt where there's usually hard dirt. There was some peanut butter where there's usually filled jelly. dirt. Jelly. There's peanut butter where there's jelly. There's pickles where there's usually bananas. Um, but overall, it was a great day. We thought we were in the clear with the weather, but uh, a thunderstorm had a different idea right at the moment we were going to try to do podiums. So there were no podiums. And you know what? This is what a mountain bike race in the Pacific Northwest is all about. It's about racers so excited about the first rain we've had in five months that they don't even care. They just show up and race anyway. It's about trail builders who know that bike wheels pack down trails and can't wait to get back out there as soon as the race is over to shred that newly packed down tread. It's sharing ideas and camaraderie and just seeing who else is a big enough lunatic to be out here too. I'd like to extend a big hearty thank you to everyone who makes this race series possible. Y'all are awesome. I'd also like to extend a shout out to the racers because without racers, you have no race. I'd also like to thank all my Patreon supporters, especially my Lomi Goodness level sponsors, Andy Suri, Charles Kim, Damon Corey, Randy Relaford, and Ty Morgan Marbit, PE. I'd also like to mention my Hero Dirt level sponsors, Bryce Ulrich, Heather Van Valkenburg, Jason Moore, and Pedro Cantarini. Navigate to patreon.com slash voiceover trails if you're finding these videos helpful, entertaining, or perhaps both. Now, get out there and go ride your bike.